Hi, my name is Isis Princess Nix. You're watching Isis and Friends Bible Tutorials. This show is called Abstaining from Sex Till After Marriage. I abstained from sex for 10 years. The first five years I was able to get married the, the last year of abstaining from sex. And then the second set of five years, I did not get married. Anyways, some of you are probably going to try to abstain from sex and be successful. And I would like to show you how to be successful. And I'm gonna tell you my dues, the things that I did uh, to maintain and uh, what not to do. Okay, some of the important things that I thought um, I was supposed to do, I was not supposed to do it. And main thing guys, if God did not tell you to abstain from sex, then it's probably not for you. Okay? I'm going to run some things by you real quick. First of all, I want to say the prayer. God, we want your understanding of your word, not my own understanding, but we want your understanding. Bless us to be interested in it, to apply your word in Jesus' name. Amen. When a person tries to do the law, they fail. The only person to do the law in the history of time God's law, his word to a T, the Holy Bible to a T is Jesus Christ. There's scripture that says it's better to obedient, be obedient than to sacrifice. And my thoughts before this whole journey was, oh my gosh, I'm going to be obedient. And then there's scripture that says obedience commands the blessing. And what I realized is because I was not a virgin, I was not being obedient. I was actually sacrificing. It's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. And I was still in sin, no matter that I wasn't having sex. Not to discourage you or anything like that. I did abstain from sex. Um, the first time at five years, I got head. <laughs> like that. Um, I got head uh, the first two years. And then I realized that that was very close to sex. This made it really awkward. And it didn't. It wasn't good. Um, the devil may tell you, nobody's going to want you if you have sex. If you're not having sex, nobody's going to want you. I talk about that in the tutorial. And that's not true. Some people will uh, try to marry you anyways. That happened to me. The first year I abstained from sex, I actually was engaged. I got engaged and we did not have sex. We slept in the same bed. But guess what? I wasn't attracted to him. And that's very important. Yeah, I just, I just don't think that it was the right thing for me to do and I'm definitely not telling you to abstain from sex I want you to know I'm gonna repeat it again you'll still be in sin unfortunately for me I didn't get get uh, pregnant or get a disease and I'm grateful to God however if you can think about not kissing someone not holding nobody's hand and I my mom is she, she lives far from me and I really don't have no family around me at all so going three five four years without kissing or hugging a man that I liked and I was intimately um, interested in was a bad idea I got clinical depression I was having anxiety attacks I was homeless in this mess after getting that divorce still married the wrong person abstaining from sex till after marriage i was successful at abstaining from sex till after marriage but i failed at marriage i will talk about homosexuality in this bible tutorial and i want to be clear i mentioned a gay king a gay ruler in there and and this is coming in the end time during uh now basically now hence the world right now is trying to make homosexuality like it's a normal thing. Homosexuality is not natural. Abstaining from sex after you had sex is not natural either. That's the reason why a lot of homosexuality and molestations come from out of churches is because they're abstaining from sex the wrong way. At number two, do not make this a vow. Make it a commitment. I'm paraphrasing, but I'll put the, the the picture up of a scripture that I'm talking about is God says when a person makes a vow to him, 
if they don't keep that vow, then their life will be worse. To make it a commitment, I made this a commitment. I was abstain abstaining for a total of 10 years. The first time was five and the second time was five years I abstained. It's hard to talk about because I recorded this video um, of how to in 2019, but I didn't put it out because damn, I ain't been happy. So I had to really think about it. And then sure enough, 2020, I had sex. And um, it's been a year since I've had sex. Again, I'm not abstaining from sex. It's just, it's just what life has been doing. And I mean life is in life more abundantly, Jesus Christ. I don't think abstaining from sex is life more abundantly. However, some of you guys are going to do it. And I want you to be successful. And I don't want you to feel like God forsaked you or that you can't find anybody. I just don't want you going to it willy-nilly. I feel like I failed for number one, I didn't. I stopped dating, I stopped drinking, I stopped dancing in my living room. Like I used to really love dancing. But also my life was not better after I abstained from sex. It actually started to decline. My joy, all kind of good things that I like to do declined, but I didn't see it and I didn't notice it because number one, I've never been on this earth before. Some people have knowledge beyond their years. Some people know not to do things that I've done. They haven't even read the Bible, but anyways, um, I touch base on some things in here regarding things that I heard that were really wrong. I heard from Christian people. One thing, I keep saying one thing, it's so many, but uh, a Christian person, people have told me, oh, you weren't attracted to him? Oh, that's okay. Maybe God sent him home. Mm -mm. You need to be attracted to the person that you're going to marry for the rest of your life and hopefully have children with. Duh. And then uh, check the fruit. I've heard Christians just throw that, that saying around. Check the fruit. But they don't tell you what the fruit is. Do you want to know what the fruit is? Not a car. It's not even a bank account. That's important too how the person handles money that's important too yeah and i want to say that in the whole entire 10 years of abstaining from sex until marriage i did not meet not one person abstaining from sex until marriage and i love church and i was going to ministry school not one person and every single christian person that ever came up to me and said well oh, you having sex well you shouldn't be having sex you're not supposed to be having sex they were having sex. So that was part of the reason why I never before decided to abstain from sex. I'm like, y'all ain't even doing it. I think that's it. Oh, I just want to say that, I don't know if I said this in the beginning, but I don't recommend it. I feel like it threw off the whole entire algorithm of my life. Like I, I cut myself off from the world. I was isolating. The Bible says three times that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And, and if you're thinking this is going to get you closer to God, I can't tell you if it is or if it isn't. But what I can tell you is you're already close to God. You're already with him. He's already with you. Number three, listen to every single one of my sermons. I'm going to put all of the, the links in the bottom of this. And I'm just gonna load them up. But this is the real deal. Don't skip it. Don't fast forward it. Just put it on when you go to work or when you're about to go to sleep. Just listen. Hear me out because this is a lifetime commitment, or it's a couple year commitment, years commitment, or years commitment. Like I don't know, I don't know any Christians like me. And in the whole ten years, I've said before. I still didn't meet nobody like me. The person that I wound up marrying was not abstaining from sex till marriage. I'm about to reveal all kinds of stuff to you guys. And I just hope to God that you receive it and you have compassion with me. Okay? And you be gentle with me. Because I am doing something that I don't know if anyone else would have done this. But I want to be a vessel of truth. And I want to tell you the truth. I don't want to lie to you. Why? Hear what the Spirit has.
has to be released, okay? The Holy Spirit. Would you be me? Tell your mama, tell your cousin, tell your sister, tell your brother, tell your uncle, tell your auntie. I'm going to tell you how I stayed from sex till marriage, what happened on that journey, and what I did wrong, and how I'm, I'm maintaining it and doing all the steps with me, myself, and I, my body, and God to make it to um, marrying the right person. Oh, glory to God, I did not get pregnant in that marriage. So, God rescue me, bitch. And by the way, God is going to bat for me in the spirit because I'm probably going to say some things that people are going to be like, what? But my real ones is going to really appreciate this. And all glory to God, Jesus Christ is the head of my life. Hey, he picked me. He picked me. So let's give it up to my live studio audience, the picker, the one who picked me. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And thank you for your son, Jesus. And I pray. Jesus Christ and the 12 disciples. Woo! someone else. 
So I go date somebody else, and this doesn't work out either. And while I'm dating him, my grandma calls me and tells me that. And then me and this guy, we just we just we broke up, and I was sad about it. And then I had sex again, and this time I was like, ooh, I think I'm gonna go to hell for that. <laughs> so then I started contemplating. I don't want to have sex outside of marriage. I don't want to be worried about my soul. And I definitely don't want to sleep with someone that I'm not in love with. I don't want to. I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm gonna wait on you, God. And before this, being married, it didn't even cross my mind because honestly, my mom hadn't gotten married yet, and my sisters weren't married. They had children, and then like the people around me weren't married got married yet and so I was like you know I never really thought about it until I abstained from sex till marriage and I was like wow so this one night I was in my car and I came home from the club it was kind of late and I was in my parking lot and a broadcast came on I live in California and this broadcast is from KJLH which is Stevie Wonder's radio station Woo-hoo! love you Stevie Wonder so the broadcast was, it, it must have been like transitioning into Sunday, and um, it was really, really, really early in the morning. And so the, the people were talking about abstaining from sex till marriage. And I was like, hmm. And so I just sat in my car and I listened to it. And the people said, if you really believe that all things are possible, then why don't you think that you can stop having sex till marriage? And guess what? That's one of my scriptures. I didn't know the Bible like that, but I definitely will read Psalms, and I knew that all things were possible through Jesus Christ. That's and so you know I was like, wow, all things are possible. That's our scripture. That's exactly what I say to myself because I'm an actress. It is possible for me to be in blockbuster movies. It is possible. So that's what I would tell myself all the time. And so for them to use that scripture in one of the biggest things for me because also. What used to cross my mind was, <laughs> what? No, you can't stop having sex. But I, I can, and I've done it before. Where you know, I would, I don't know if you, you would, would you do like, you know, maybe six months and I have sex, a couple, couple weeks and I have sex to just feel like you're owning your body and you're just like, uh, I'm not gonna give it up to nobody until you get horny and then, and then. Uh, that very special person gets to have sex with you. <laughs> this is ghetto, but all right. So during that night, they had the testimony of people calling in. I just heard all these testimonies talking about that God can do it. I was like, wow. So I said, guys, this is a warning. Do not repeat this prayer until you've heard the whole tutorial. And do okay? not make it a vow. But this is my testimony about what happened. So. I'm in my car and I said, God, I really, really want to abstain from sex till marriage. And I believe that this is for me. So I'm going to do it. You know, I broke up with my boyfriend. There was not a way we would get back together. And um, a so year I said, later, God, I, I said this prayer. That the agreement that cannot be broken is. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, because I was thinking about the scripture that says, when two or more gather together, his presence is in the room, and that when we touch, agree concerning anything, it shall be done for them. And it was only me in the car. Of course, it's a God idea because he put the scriptures together for us. So I said, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, will you please come into agreement with me and help me to not have sex until after I get married? And I asked God, please, Lord, do not let me accidentally have sex before marriage. And I'd probably say a great deal right once. I'm not sure. But I said in Jesus' name. And I was very clear about needing their help to get me all the way through till marriage to have sex. And when I said this prayer, I felt my car get empty. Next thing is very important, who you tell next. So first you make this agreement between you, God, and the Holy Spirit, asking them to help you. And then who you 
tell next to this one because this agreement, it already happened. You're already abstaining from sex till marriage. It's a done deal. But what I've learned is if you tell the wrong person, it could, it could cause confusion and, and make you doubt what you decided. But fortunately for me, God has given me two best friends, future husband and wife. They were not married yet. I went over to their house and I said, hey guys, I'm going to abstain from sex till marriage. What do you think about that? And they were both like, that's great. So I'm like, yeah, thanks. And I already did it. So who you tell next in this work? The next right. thing I wrote on my tutorial is, um, there's a scripture that says a threefold card is, is not easily broken. And that means um, when you come into agreement, Okay, uh, threefold cards not easily broken. When I was in ministry school, it was used like when you fast, and so they would say um, it's 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 stronger because you're using the Lord to help you. Yeah, but I'm using this scripture to talk about um, threefold cards not easily broken. If you could think of like like a braid and yeah that's how I use it and I'm talking about God but I'm also talking about my friends believing with me it's my website when you come into agreement with more than one person it's not it's not easily broken um, as far as spiritually next thing that happened is after I'm walking in my abstaining from sex it's, it's a private thing then I start hearing the definitely the devil he was saying like, ain't nobody gonna marry you. You're not gonna have sex. Nobody wants to marry you before they have sex with you. So these were the bad thoughts. Sex. And you know, a lot of times we can also talk ourselves out of things. And it's, and it's important through this journey, abstaining from sex, it's important to know God's voice. 